In this lesson, we will discuss what is a repository. The repository represents an entity, and it's used primarily for carrying out queries. It's an additional layer of abstraction, which uses the mapping layer, and the mapping layer, of course, in turn uses DBAL, or database access layer, which provides direct access to the PHP database extension. You can think of the repository as filling in the gaps between the square peg and the round hole where relational database systems consist of tables, rows, and columns, whereas your program code accesses application objects. So the repository, conceptually speaking, fills in the gaps, and it allows your application to communicate through to the database table without having to issue specific SQL commands or have an awareness of the database structure. The Doctrine implementation is based upon a class Doctrine ORM Entity Repository. This class implements a series of find methods and support for what we call magic finders. It also supports SQL queries, the Doctrine Query Builder, a result set mapping builder which lets you modify the return value from the database, and support for the Entity Manager. The find commands defined include find, which does a lookup by primary key, find all, find by, which takes an associative array of key value pairs, to generate the appropriate SQL, and find one by, which is a variation of find by, but it only returns one single entity. There's also an implementation of double underscore call, which allows you to make calls to undefined methods, which will then defer to either find by or find one by. Our first example is repo create.php. In this, we show you two techniques to create a repository. For technique number one, we instantiate entity repository directly. We use an entity manager as the argument. We then use the entity manager to get class data on our defined entity class. In technique number two, the difference is the second argument. We create a direct instance of the class metadata object. Down below, we then test these two repositories to see if there are any differences. Notice that we are using a magic method called find one by ISO2. This does not exist. What the entity repository class will do then is it will look at the prefix, in this case find one by, it will then defer to that method and take the array as an argument. When we run the example, however, you'll notice that there's an error generated using technique number two, whereas technique number one properly defers to the appropriate magic method. Accordingly, our recommendation would be to use the Entity Manager to get class metadata, rather than creating a direct instance. Our next example is repo queries named queries.php. In this example, we are using two entity classes, prospects and US states. The idea behind this program is to present a list of states using the find all from the repository and the method select state from the service class which generates an HTML select dropdown list. We then check to see if state is represented in the URI. If so, we create the repository for prospects. We then use the method create native named query, which does a lookup on the entity and finds a query which is defined, in this case called prospects who live in some state. We then create the prospect service and use the prospect service to show the header and specific information on all of the prospects who live in that state. We also use GetSQL to show you the query that was actually generated. We are now looking at prospects.php, which is in the application entity namespace. You'll notice in the entity tag, we have defined what's called a named native query. You can specify as many of these as you want. Each one would have to be identified by the named native query annotation. We then give it a name, which can then be referenced by the repository. The result class is identified by the result class parameter. Alternatively, you could define a result set mapping, and an example is shown starting on line 21 and below. On line 16, we have the actual query, which will be generated. Notice that we're using a placeholder, which value must be supplied before the query is executed. Going back to our example on line 37, the query will be pulled up. We then set the parameter acquired from dollar underscore get. We then say get result, 
to retrieve all of the results from the query. Let's now go ahead and run the example. So as mentioned before, we have a list of states. We pick a state, and from there, we will then run the query, and the query is shown on the screen as you can see. We now have a list of all of the prospects who live in that particular state. Our next example is repo queries querybuilder.php. In this example, we show the support for the query builder. Our entity class, in this case, is ISO country codes. On line 22, we get an instance of the repository using the entity manager to get class metadata. We then use create query builder off of the repository to get an instance of the doctrine query builder. On line 28, you'll notice that we are getting the result immediately without specifying select or from. This is because the repository is automatically tied to that particular entity, so there's no need to provide any additional information. We could, of course, supply a WHERE clause, order by limit, etc., etc. We then make use of what's called the ISO service. The ISO service class has a method which creates an HTML drop-down list, and there's also a method called show ISO info, which we use to display information on a specific ISO country codes entity which we locate off of the repository using find. Let's go ahead now and run this example. So as you can see, we have a drop-down list of countries. Once we choose the country, we get information on that specific country, in this example using the query builder. In summary, what is a repository? A repository sits on top of the mapping layer, carries out queries, and represents an entity. In Doctrine, the repository class provides support for various find methods, SQL queries, the query builder, result set mappings, and the entity manager.